of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this morning we are in time. Maybe uh, you know I was supposed to start my message by 11 o'clock, but it is now uh, 10 7. So we are sitting in the presence of God to listen from the Word of God. Amen. So this is the right time to listen the Word of God very carefully, and we are going to. Uh, submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God according to the word of God because as we are uh, planning to uh, uh, dedicate this house and also as we are having this worship service uh, you know I was just thinking that uh, God's presence is in our midst I mean how many of you believe that God's presence is in our midst Amen. praise Amen. God hallelujah Amen. so we have to experience that presence of God you know most of the time what happens the people are sitting simply there and they are just I mean, watching what is happening there. You know? When a pastor is preaching, oh, they are just watching that. At the same time, when this, the worship team is singing the songs, uh, some people are just watching them and, okay, oh, what they are doing? Is there any mistake? Is there any correction? So they are looking for that. But actually, you know, whenever we gather together in the presence of God, something which comes in my mind is we should be very... Uh, very carefully sit in the presence of God and we have to listen the word of God and we have to experience the presence of God and also the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know how many of you are experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit when we are sitting in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We know that we are in a house now. But no matter whether we are in a house, whether we are under a tree, whether we are outside, whether we are in a church building, there is nothing okay bothered us because you know, we are sitting in the presence of God. Oh, we yeah, have yeah. the presence of God in our midst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have to be very concentrate in the presence of God when we listen to the word of God. Then only that will be a beneficiary for our life. I mean, so I think uh, the, the screen share will be there. Uh, I mean, due the time I, when I'm preaching. Okay, so the, the message which I wanted to talk to you uh, this morning, the title is the, A Blessed Home with a Divine Safety. A Blessed Home with a Divine Safety. I mean, Devi Ga Surechidatumula Aningraike Pata Pavana. So when we talk about this point, you know, we have to think about what is the safety and what is a home and also how can we safely abide in the house of the Lord. I mean, so this morning we are going to read maybe one verse that is Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8. It is there, I think, in the screen. So uh, one, one word is highlighted there. So you have to look into that also. So uh, somebody can read that verse from the screen. Yeah. When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your roof, that you may not bring the gill of blood upon your house, if anyone shall fall from it. I mean, especially that word, you know, listen there. When you build a new house, you shall make a parapet for your robe so that you will not bring blood guilt on your house if anyone falls from it. I mean, if you have a Malala Bible, you can read it in Malala also. That, that will be more clarity from there. Okay, so... When we read uh, the Old Testament, you know, we understand God has given various laws and instructions and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, regulations regarding I mean, what to do and what not to do. And also uh, something uh, that when we do, I mean, what will be the consequence of that? And all those things are written in, in, in different places of Bible, especially in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. At the same time, you know, there are some instructions about how to worship God, how to worship God what to worship God and whom to worship God and also what is the danger of the idol worship. Okay, These things are there in Bible, in, in different parts of the Bible, maybe uh, in Exodus or Deuteronomy or Leviticus, in, in those I mean, portions we can see that God is giving the instructions about many things, especially there are some instructions about what to eat. Instructions about what to eat in the Old Testament okay, and what not to eat what not to eat and also the consequence if you kill somebody accidentally the consequence 
if you kill somebody accidentally. Okay, and also there are some laws concerning war, how to go for a war, and also who must be, I mean, standing in front of the line of the of the war. Okay, and all those things are written in Bible. And also God said how they have to build their house. How they have to build their house, the people of Israel, how they are supposed to I mean, build their house also. That is, that is also, is there in the Bible. And also, when you are building a house, what should be there in your mind? What should you keep in your mind? And how to build a, a building also. And, you know, here in this verse, we see how to build a house or what is the important thing that when we uh, uh, build a house, or, or what we should consider, I mean, uh, about when we are building a house. That means, the considering other people when you are building a, uh, in a, in a house. You know, when you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof so that you may not bring the guilt of the bloodshed on your house if somebody falls from there. Listen very carefully. You know, when you are making a house, it, it, is, it is given actually in the Old Testament, so we will be coming to the uh, spiritual meaning of that in the in, in later maybe. So here it says that when you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof so that you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on other people. Amen. Listen very carefully. And there there must be uh, uh, mainly there must be uh, four kinds of parapet around the house, around the house or around the roof of the house. Okay, so that's what we read uh, uh, from from the uh, different places of uh, this. I mean, uh, 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 book of Deuteronomy. Okay, and let me try to explain that. I mean, contextual background of uh, uh, this verse also. That uh, what does this man is to the people of Israel that while they were building a house. Okay, the meaning is in Israel they used to make the flat roof of a house, and that was the living space for the family. That was the living space for the family, and also. During the hot season, they used to sleep at the roof of the building, or that is called the parapet. That is called the parapet. And they used to sleep in that place because, I mean, that time, in the, in the, in the I mean, hot season, you know, uh, they, they are getting the cooling from there. That's the reason that they are making those things. And the owner of the house had to build a low wall or the parapet or railing around the roof of the, to, to protect the other people. To protect the other people and the house owner had to make the barrier to protect the people the barrier to protect the people and also otherwise it may it may cause to many dangerous things for the other people that means if they fall down from that area they may die they may get some injury and they may uh, get some accident or something so that is the reason that i mean it was i mean said in the bible that god was saying when you are making a or building a house you have to make the parapet around the roof around the roof and also we know the house is uh, uh, the, the house is a place of safety sometimes you know when we go outside and we come inside we say oh, oh we are safe now okay sometimes we go outside and then after that when we come inside the house and we will just lock the house right we lock the house and we will say oh we are safe now but let me ask you one question are we are we really safe inside the house are we really safe inside the house? Not at all. Not at all. You know, we are not safe inside the house also. We may be outside the house also. But for the children of God, it says that God will sustain you. God will protect you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. And you know, when you go outside and when you are staying inside also, you are not getting the safety. But the children of God will say, God is my God is my protector. Hallelujah. So we have the protection. We have the safety inside the house and also outside the house. Hallelujah. And that's what we, we read in, in this particular portion. So we have to understand one thing. You know, here in this particular portion, God is giving a different aspect of safety. The different aspect of safety means, you know, we have been thinking about God will protect a house and God will protect and God will protect safely the people, those who are staying inside the house. That is sure. That is sure. There is no doubt at all about God's protection. At the same time, we have to think about what is our obligation? What is our responsibility to do something for our family members? And what is our responsibility to keep and save, keep safely our family members and also for other people? 
also for other people. Hallelujah. You know, when you, when you, when you look into this uh, uh, particular words, you can understand there are some particular words which is used repeatedly. Repeatedly. You look into that verse, once again, you open your Bible and look into that verse. Now, you will see there are some particular words which is used repeatedly. What is that? You, right? You, house, or roof, okay? And all those things. You are there, house is there, yours, your is there, roof is there, which sometimes speaks to each person. Okay? You know, when it says that you, or your house, or roof, Okay? And all those things are speaking to the people of God that you personally have a responsibility to, to take care of the family and also to take care of the other people. <clears throat> I believe you got it. Amen? So when God is speaking something in Bible, there is a spiritual meaning for that. And we are trying to understand what is the spiritual meaning of the Old Testament text. Now, in the Old Testament, many things are written literally, so they have to obey that literally. At the same time, the Old Testament texts are not to be literally obeyed by the New Testament people, because if you are going for literally obeying the uh, things which is written in the Old Testament, that is not possible. That is not possible because you know if they, they used to uh, bring, uh, they used to take the animals for uh, worshiping God. Okay, so now we are not taking any animals to, I mean, uh, to offer unto the Lord because we don't want to do that because we are in the New Testament period and we are worshiping God in truth and spirit, right? We are worshiping God in truth and spirit. Okay, so we have to take the spiritual meaning of the Old Testament text and we are worshiping God. At the same time, here we understand that. You know, when I'm talking about these things, I mean, don't think that, okay, this message is only for uh, Brother Jovins and family. No, no. It is not only for them, but it is included every one of us. We, are, we all are there, and this message is speaking to every one of us. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, you may be thinking that, okay, this is the dedication of this house, or so, uh, pastor is speaking to this family. No, I'm speaking to every family of our church. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in the Old Testament times, in these verses was perfectly meant for the making a building literally in the Old Testament when they were making a literal house they had to think about how they are building and they had to think about when they are making this building you have to keep in mind that it should not harm to any person any other person and the persons those who are living in the family okay at the same time in the New Testament you know the building is not at all a matter Okay? The building is not at all a matter. I mean, you may be staying in your own house. You may, be, you may be having a big house. You may be having a small house. You may be staying in an apartment. Any, any problem? So, um, okay. uh, so when we are staying in a house, you know, sometimes the people are thinking, uh, okay, uh, I am staying in a big house and that person, that family is staying in a small house. Okay, So uh, somebody will be staying in a small house or somebody will be staying in a big house or somebody will be staying in an apartment, okay, a rented house or somebody, some, somebody will be staying in a, in a remote area or somebody will be staying in a, in a city, but that doesn't matter about God's presence, you know, wherever you are, you have to think about, I mean, the building is not the important thing, the building is not the important thing, the house building is not the important thing, but the people, those who are staying inside, they are important for God. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully that point. The building is not at all important for God. God is not looking for, okay, how much, how, how big is your house or something, okay? But God is looking how these people are staying there and how they are dealing with the things and how they are spiritually maintaining their life and values of the spirituality Hallelujah. in their life I mean, when they are staying inside the house. Hallelujah. So this is the point that I, I, I just wanted to bring into you that three things are there mainly, you know, when we build our house or when we I mean, maintain our family, we have to think about, I mean, our personal 
Christian life. The first one is our personal Christian life. And the second one is our family life. Amen? Our personal Christian life, our family life. And also the third one is, amen, our concern towards others when we build a house. Listen very carefully. Our concern towards other people when we build a house. Build a house means, not the building I'm talking but when we build or maintain our family life, we have to think about others. What is our concern? Now, we have to think about the people who are living in the world, we have to think about the people who are living in the world. So, we have to think about what is our personal life and what is our family life and think about what is my concern regarding the other people. I'm coming to that point. Amen. So in the New Testament, building which, which which is made out of any metal doesn't matter. But the people, those who are living inside that house, they matter for God. Hallelujah. And remember one thing that uh, you and me are the precious people in the sight of God. Amen. Every person, those who are living inside the house, they are precious for the Lord. They are precious for the Lord. Jovens is precious for the Lord. Jelen is precious for the Lord. Uh, their daughter is precious for the Lord. And every person, those who are staying in this house, they are precious for the Lord. This building is not at all precious for the Lord. Hallelujah. But even then, we are blessing them and we are blessing this house. But at the same time, remember one thing, we are precious for the Lord. So we have to be maintaining our Christian life, our spiritual life, our family life, and our conduct with the other people. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when the people of Israel, they were receiving this law, they were receiving this law about uh, uh, building their house, you know, they were in the wilderness. Okay, when you read uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8, we understand these people were still in wilderness, but they were supposed to be raised at Canaan in within, two, within I mean, uh, some days. Okay, so they were supposed to be there in Canaan, but still they were in wilderness. So they were knowing, and God was knowing that. God was saying, okay, after all, these people reached to Canaan, they will start to build a house. They will start to build their house. But before that, in advance, I just wanted to give them some instruction. I just wanted to give them some laws and uh, rules that how you have to make your this is the things which is happening there. You know, God was knowing that these people, after reaching Canaan, they will start to make some houses for themselves. But before that, God says, in advance, I'm saying that when you read, when you build a build a building or house, you have to think about when I mean, you have to make some parapet around your roof. Parapet around your roof. So that means if you are not doing that safely that may cause the other people to get some harm that may cause the other people to get some harm that is what god says in that particular i mean verse of course god is always faithful in safely protecting all of us hallelujah but let us think about what is our responsibility god is always faithful god is always faithful and god will keep every one of us god will faithfully i mean protect every one of us but one for one question is what is my responsibility? What is my obligation in keeping my family and also the other people? The other people. Hallelujah. You know, do we have a concern? Do we have a concern towards the other people? Amen. And that's why this verse is specifically saying that when you build your house, keep in mind that you should not cause any harm to others. That means no one should fall down or die because of your carelessness. Okay, no one should die, no one should get a ham because of your carelessness. Now, most of the time, what happens, you know, we are not thinking about other people when we are doing something, when we are speaking something, when we are doing something, okay, maybe personally or your family, when you are doing something, you are not caring about other people. No, usually that happens. We don't want to know about other people, what they think or what they think, right? Yeah? But, but, but we are doing everything according to our opinion, according to our concern. But we have to think about the other people when we are doing something. When we have to think about, I mean, am I, I mean, am I, am I bored or am I uh, action? I mean, harm any people, any person outside uh, my house? 
Okay, that, so that should be in our in our mind when we are doing that. So we must make a parapet. We must make a parapet around our personal and family life and the parapet of four sides. Okay, the parapet should be the fourth yeah. side. That means the around the roof, around the roof. That there should be a parapet. You know what, what is the Malayalam for that parapet? <coughs> yeah, just say. <coughs> yeah, Kaimate. <coughs> Kaimate. Yeah, Kaimate. Kaimate is the English, I mean, Malayalam word for the parapet or what is that? Um, it should be around the roof. Okay, it should be around the roof. Okay, uh, let it be there. So, um, you know, let us think about how can we personally, I mean, uh, how can we protect ourselves and others also? How can we protect ourselves and others? Right? Let us think about uh, what is the duty of, of, of or responsibility of a, of a, of a believer of, or, or a family protecting themselves and others, okay? So we have an obligation to protect ourselves and also to protect the other people. You know, most of the time, the negligence of some people uh, brings suffering and pain upon the other families, you know? Uh, uh, think about, uh, I mean, what is my spiritual concern about the other people? What is my spiritual concern about the other people? When I'm doing something, is, is, is it a blessing for other people or is it a harm for the other people? So we should uh, I mean, think about those things and uh, are, we, are, are my family uh, exam, an example for other people or other families? It should be there in our mind when we are doing something. We are the believers, we are the believers and we should know about what is my responsibility and what is my family's responsibility when I'm doing something. Are we, uh, let, let, us be, let us be an example for other people and let us think about, I mean, am I strengthening the other people or am I weakening the other people when I'm doing something? This is very important. Okay, so that's what uh, we understand that uh, we should have a spiritual value in our family and uh, in our, I mean, in our personal life and we should not, uh, I mean, hinder anybody about our, our personal life or family life or uh, the, the, the other people. I mean, when family, you know, uh, when uh, some families are neglecting uh, to keep that values of the spiritual values of the family, you know, that may weaken the other people. So we have to think about what is my responsibility to protect myself, to protect my family, and also to protect the other people in, 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 in my life. Amen. So we have many instructions which is given in the Bible regarding that. And also, it does not matter that uh, whether you have, uh, I mean, you are doing everything uh, publicly, but you can do something secretly also. You know, some people in public, they are not uh, I mean, known. You know, that means... Uh, they are not doing anything uh, outside. That means, but inside, so there are some people, they are praying for the other people. Okay? That, that may be the talent of that person. You know, in, inside, the, inside the house, that person is praying, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. He is praying, sitting there, and he is praying for all the families. I mean, but nobody knows. In public, they are so silent. So think about, you know, you have a talent and you have a responsibility inside your family and you have to do that. If you are not you doing that, then God is asking, I mean, what is your plan and what is your obligation to protect your family and also to protect the other families? Hallelujah. So this morning, we have to think about what is my personal obligation and what is my personal responsibility in uh, in, in, in building the other people, building the other families. Hallelujah. You know, uh, remember one thing that we are, every believer is a social being, right? Every being is a social being and we have a courtesy to other people. We have a courtesy to other people and we have something to do for the society as a believer and as a Christian family, you know, we have to think about how can we influence the society. Okay. We are not only living in a house, we are going to the church and we are going to the society and we can influence the society. We can influence the other people. Think about how can I influence the other people as a believer, as a believer. Hallelujah. And you know, uh, some people usually ask, uh, uh, why should I make a parapet around my roof? Because this is my house. I mean, why should I care for the other people? <clears throat> yeah. Why should I make when parapet or the, the, the parapet around the house, I'm talking about the spiritual thing, okay? In the New Testament, it is the spiritual thing. So why should I make a parapet around my roof? 
because I am staying there, I know everything and my family is staying there, I should have uh, uh, done it uh, for myself only and why should I care for the other people, okay? But the answer is there in, in, in book of Genesis chapter 4, book of Genesis chapter 4 verses 9 to 11, we read that portion, uh, Genesis chapter 4 verses 9 to 11, so we can read that portion. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I your brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Okay, listen, we, we know that story very well, right? In this particular chapter, it is written there are uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Okay, so both of them went for an offering. Both of them went for an offering and God pleased the offering of Abel, but God did not please with Cain. What happened after that? Cain became very angry and with his brother and he finally killed him. Okay, we know the story very well and I'm not going to explain those things. But the point is, the Lord asked, where is your brother? Okay, where is your brother Abel? God is asking to Cain, where is your brother Abel? His answer was, I do not know. I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Listen. Am I my brother's keeper? I do not know where is Abel. The Lord said, your brother's blood is crying to me. God said, your brother's blood is crying to me. What is the meaning of that? This guy. Okay. What is the meaning of no, Cain was saying, I don't know about my brother. Okay, I'm not talking about the own brother or somebody here. You know, you may have own brother or sister, but I'm talking about the other people, the brother or the sister, the other people, the other families. Okay, so I'm coming to that point. You know, we have a we have an obligation, we have a responsibility to keep the other people also safe in the presence of God. And we have an obligation to bring those people into Christ. Amen. So here, Abel, I mean, Cain is asking, no, 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 I don't know about my brother because I am not the keeper of my brother. But listen to me very carefully that this morning, you and me are the keepers of many people. We have the responsibility to keep other people also inside the presence of God. Let them also be abiding in the presence of God throughout life. Hallelujah. Here we see that, we know that innocent Abel was killed by the selfish, selfishness of that man, the brother, I mean, uh, Cain. And he is responsible person for the death of Abel. Okay. But he was not uh, agreeing with that. And uh, you know, remember that we have no excuse to say somebody, if somebody is falling down from that roof, and also, if somebody is, I mean, falling away from the presence of God, going away from the presence of God, we do not have any excuse to, excuse to stay in the presence of God. We have to take that responsibility. Amen. We have to take that responsibility. Hallelujah. Knowingly or unknowingly, we are not aware about, uh, I mean, the other people, or we are not aware about uh, our own responsibility in keeping or caring for other people and, uh, I mean, bringing those people into the presence of God. Amen. So we have to take a decision that I will be careful about the other people and my thoughts and my speech or my words will not cause any harm or any problem, any pain for other people. Hallelujah. Let us love other people and let us, I mean, bring the peace into the into other families and let them also join together and praise the name of the Lord with us. Hallelujah. So, so, so this is the main point that I, I would like to bring into your attention that God is having a God is having a desire that we should have the obligation. We should take that obligation. At the same time, you know, when we come to the New Testament, let me let me tell you four things, four important spiritual parameters that we can make in our family. I mean, when we are making our family or maintaining our family with that intention of caring for other people. Okay, so that, that I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 8 is normally speaking about how can you care for other people. Okay, not only for your, your family, but for other people. At the same time, we are going to, I mean, we are not going to, not going to read uh, all those portions because we don't have time. 
but we will just go to go through that i mean four points the four important spiritual parapets that we need to make in our family with our own initiation okay we have to take the initiation to build our family and to, to build the other families in the presence of the first one is in my understanding the first spiritual parapet is god himself god himself okay so god must be the first parapet of our life god must be there in in, in and around our house that means god must be the, the central point of our, our family and we should give the priority and preference to god but god is sometimes is not in the first place no? think about that how much priority that we are giving to god in our family in a family so let the first parapet be god if god is the first preference then everything will be going smoothly okay if you're putting somebody or something else instead of god in that place i mean the 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 the, the, the things are going to be messed up but when we are putting and giving priority for god and placing god in the middle place and saying that lord without you we have nothing without you we have no blessing we need all the blessing with god with god okay the first thing the first parapet that i mean give preference for god or god himself and the second parapet okay just keep it keep it that in mind in, my, in your mind that the prayer worship and bible meditation in family prayer worship bible meditation in family so the first point matthew chapter 6 verse 33 is the verse and the same day the second point prayer worship and bible meditation in family you know when you read joshua chapter 24 verse 15 there uh, i mean joshua is saying something that uh, he, he took a decision okay many people were going away from the presence of god many people were not serving the living god at the same time joshua took a decision what is it as for me and my house we will serve or we will worship god this must be our personal decision that whether the other people are worshiping god or not this is not a matter for us as a believer we have to take a decision that as for me and my household we will serve and we will worship the lord hallelujah and i believe that let your home be a prayerful home and let your home be a blessing for other people let us have the prayer in our house and let us have a worship in our house amen so as we continue continuing our life in this world I mean, let our house be a blessing for other people let uh, uh, let there be i mean prayer in our in our family let there be family prayer in our family let there be i mean i mean uh, meditating the word of god in our family I mean, when you read the bible I mean, daily and when you are meditating the bible with your family members that will build the the, the spiritual life of your family members Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking, I mean, I don't know how many of you are having that uh, I mean, practice of reading Bible, I mean, together, I mean, personally you are reading, I know, but reading Bible uh, together with all the family members at the same time, meditating something, sharing something from that word and uh, sharing to your, your children. Okay, okay, we are, we are, we are just calling a, a family, we are having a family prayer and reading one, one portion, maybe one chapter and just share something from there, maybe children can share or uh, the parents can share something and tell them this is what the bible says okay that will be a blessing for all the people okay you know uh, we will we will uh, okay uh, let us have that uh, and uh, you know uh, there are many many struggles in the life of every every members of the family the people are going through the tension the people are going through the i mean stress in their life but at the same time you know we have a responsibility to keep all the members of the family together in the presence of god and we have to pray for them and we have to read the bible we have to meditate the bible together with the family hallelujah yeah. so that will be a blessing for every family hallelujah and the third one third one is uh, uh, the, the different one that is uh, um <clears throat> what is that The third, uh, third point is uh, uh, hospitality, right? The hospitality, yeah. What is that? First Peter chapter 4, uh, verse 9, I mean, speaks about the hospitality. Yeah. The hospitality, you know, for, for 
For example, we will go to Second Kings chapter four, verses nine and ten. We will read that verse. Yeah, First Peter uh, four nine. We will read leave that, and uh, we will go to Second uh, Kings chapter four, verses nine and ten. Yeah. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof of the walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. So that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. Okay, what is that? The wealthy Shunammite woman said to her husband, Behold, now I know that this is the holy man of God who is continually passing your way. Let us make a small room on the roof. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bird, a table, and chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. It says about the hospitality of a woman. Hallelujah. Every woman of a family has the responsibility for the hospitality. Praise God. So we have to take a decision that my house is open for the other people. That means that means we have to do the hospitality for the other people. You know, I know in, uh, in Kerala there are many uh, houses, even, even here also in our church also, our families are so eager to i mean uh, uh, accept the people inside the house no uh, they, they are so happy when the people are coming inside the house no I, I i don't want to mention any names of the families here but i know that every family of our church they are so happy to receive the people inside okay when somebody is saying we are coming to your house they're so happy okay come 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 brother come sister come no problem we will make something and we will cook something and give you we will have a we will have a treat there Okay, so we will have a party there. So the people are so happy. You know, this must be there in our families. The hospitality is one of the important things. But most important thing is the fourth one. Listen there, what is that? Evangelism. We are coming to that point. Evangelism is most important responsibility of a family. We should have prayer. We should have meditating Bible. We should, uh, I mean, read Bible. And we should have the family prayer everything is good we should have a worship inside the house everything is good everything is good we should have the hospitality but at the same time we should give preference for the evangelism also you know matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says we are the light of this world Hallelujah. we are the light of this world that means god has placed every person every family in different places i mean god has placed the job in family in this area and God has placed the Jason brother and family in Javis. And God has placed every person in different places with a purpose and with, us in, with, a, with an intention that you have to be fruitful for the name of the Lord wherever you are placed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me conclude my message that, I mean, let the evangelism be the important part, important responsibility of a family as we are living in a particular place. Amen. Let, let the people, those who are coming inside your house, be blessed. Let them hear about Jesus. Let them hear about the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have that obligation. I mean, let, uh, let, let uh, our neighbors, there are many neighbors. Okay, let them hear. Let them listen. Our worship inside the house. Let them hear our prayer inside the house. And let them also know about Jesus more and more. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing in that. I mean, this is our important priority. What is that? Evangelism. In, in all the possible ways, take time and share the gospel and give Jesus to other people. This is our importance I mean, in our family life. Hallelujah. So let us all I mean, conclude this message. I mean, with a word of prayer, let us all close our eyes in the presence of God this morning. I mean, let us all close our eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to conclude this message I mean, with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. You know, I've been speaking about many things from these particular words. Hallelujah. So let us remember, let us meditate that words, you know, I mean, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, 22 verse 8 Lord says when you are making a building when you are making a house you have to keep something in your mind what is that you have to make the parapet around the roof of your house hallelujah. because hallelujah if somebody is falling down from there they should not die there should not be any harm for hallelujah. the people 
There should not be any depth in the people. So you have to be very careful about uh, all those things when you are maintaining your family life. Hallelujah. So let us close our eyes in the presence of God and let us pray together. Hallelujah. Remember one thing. Let our home be a blessed home with a divine safety. Let our home be a blessed house with a divine safety. Amen. Think about how can we protect ourselves and also the other people. Hallelujah. No one should go away from the presence of God because of our carelessness. You know, most of the time we are careless. That's the reason many people are going away from the presence of God. Hallelujah. So let us keep that in our mind and let us pray, oh Lord, help us to be very careful in our in our life, oh God. Hallelujah. And also let us know that we have a social courtesy. We have a social courtesy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us have the four important spiritual paraphrases in our family life that when God himself as a paraphrase and also the paraphrase of prayer, worship and the Bible meditation and the paraphrase of hospitality and the paraphrase of evangelism. Hallelujah. And I pray that may God bless every one of us and may God help all of us in the presence of God to do, I mean, to, to be fruitful in the presence of God for the kingdom of God in the coming days. Hallelujah. Let us all, I mean, pray in the presence of God and let us take a decision. Oh Lord, let me be a blessing for other people. Let my family be a blessing for other people. People. I mean, let uh, I mean, our church be a blessing for other people. Hallelujah. Let us all surrender our life in the presence of God this morning. I mean, I request uh, uh, Brother George to lead us in prayer now. I mean, as we were listening the word of God, let us surrender. Let us submit us in the mighty hand of God. Let us bring all the families in the mighty hand of God Amen. so that uh, God will, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, God will use every family of our church in the coming days uh, for the glory of the Lord uh, in different ways. Hallelujah. Let us meditate the word of God and let us pray together as we pray together. I mean, now I request uh, uh, Brother George to lead us.